Welcome everybody to my lecture on computational geometry. I'm Philipp Kindermann. I'm from Würzburg. I am here for one semester as a replacement professor and I'm giving two master lectures. This one on computational geometry and another one on approximation algorithms. Unfortunately, because of the corona crisis, I cannot be there in person, so everything will have to be a bit different than usually. That means that I will record the videos. And in this very first recording that you're watching now, I will give you a short introduction, how everything will work and what we will do in this lecture. For the lecture, I will pre-record a bunch of videos, as you can see here. For every lecture, I will record about five videos, each of them between five and ten minutes, depending on how long the content of the lecture is, and I will upload them to StatIP. The upload will always be until the lecture time slot. Usually the lecture would be a Thursday at 10, and until then I am planning to upload all the videos, so you can watch them on your own. Since there is no interaction between us during the lecture, that means that everything will be much faster than usually. Usually a lecture is about 90 minutes, and I tend to ask many questions and always give you a lot of time to think about solutions to the problems yourself. This now doesn't work so well, but still I will ask you questions and then I will show a symbol like this one here. That means that at this point you should pause the video, think about the question I told you, think about it for at least two or three minutes and then you can resume, you will see another symbol and I will give you the answer. It is very important that you control the pace of the lecture on your own. That means pause a lot. Rewind if you don't understand something immediately, think about it, and only then resume. There are also homework assignments. For every lecture I will upload an exercise sheet with about two or three exercises that you can solve at home. Those are very important for you to understand truly everything that we do in the lecture. Then you have one week time to solve them. After that I will upload another video which, uh, in which I will give you a sketch of the solution. I will not give you every detail, but with the video you should be able to figure out everything. Note that the sheets will not be graded, so it's not mandatory to solve them, but I strongly urge you to do it. From my experience, the more exercises someone solves, the better they grade at the end. Usually we would have a tutorial on Wednesday, and this one I will try to keep anyway as a Zoom meeting. So at Wednesday between 12 and 2, we will have a Zoom meeting where you can come, you can ask me questions about the lecture, about the current exercise sheet, about the next exercise sheet, and I will try to answer them all. If you have any questions outside of this time frame, you can always just go to the forum and ask me a question there, or you can go to the Blubber chat and ask there, or you can simply send me an email. And whatever it is, I will try to answer them in time. These are the most important organizational things, so I will now give you an overview of what this lecture is about. The goals of this lecture is that at the end, after you have heard all the lectures, you will be able to decide which algorithms help you to solve a number of geometric problems. So we completely focus on problems that have some underlying geometry. And also, if I give you a new problem that you haven't heard before, you should be able to find efficient solutions with the concepts that you learned in this lecture. So I will, we will have a look at 12 different problems, and for each of them we will develop algorithms, and we will learn some design techniques how to solve these geometric problems, and in the end you should be able to transfer what you've learned to new problems. I assume that you have some prior knowledge on algorithms. We don't need a lot, but there are some concepts that are mandatory. Most importantly, we need the Landau notation, or the big O notation, that we will always use to analyze the running time and the space efficiency of our algorithms. For example, if I tell you something runs in order of n log n time, you should be able to know what this means. Also, we need some basic algorithms and data structures. One data structure we need a lot is a binary search tree. And at some places we might also need something like a priority queue. If you are unfamiliar with these concepts, then please read about them before you start with a lecture. 
Also, we often model problems as graph problems, so it is very helpful if you have at least some knowledge about a little bit of algorithmic graph theory. At least you should have heard the term spread first search or Dijkstra's algorithm before. As I said, we have 12 lectures, so I can show you 12 problems. Today we start with convex hull in 2D, and then every week we will have a look at another problem. Some of them are connected, some of them not so much, and we will try to solve them. At the end, after the lecture, if I tell you about any of these 12 problems here, you should be able to explain to me how an algorithm that solves them works. We have in total three textbooks, but the first one is the most important. This is the main resource for this course. This is a book by Mark de Berg, Otfried Chong, Mark van Krefeld, and Mark Overmaas. Some people also call it the Three Mark book. And all the stuff that we learn about in the lecture is in this book here. It's like a better script. They are very nice explanations, they are different figures than I use, and whenever you don't understand something, this should be the first book that you look into. If that also doesn't help, then there are two more books, one in German by Rolf Klein and another one by Keta Mulmulay, where you can also find information about most of these algorithms that we have here, and maybe a bit more details that are omitted in the Mark de Berg book. And if these three books also don't help you understand something, you can still ask me anytime. We will now move on to the second part of the lecture, where we have a look at our very first problem. 